So according to Darren Drager today on TSN 1050, mm. a Bell Ooh. Media product. Mm. Boo. Starting to hear whispers again about the future of Captain Steven Stamkos in Tampa. You know, imagine a general manager exploring doing the most difficult thing. Uh, it's almost as though um, certain GMs win cups and certain GMs lose in the first round. It's crazy. I, I can't imagine. Now, it's funny because when we put that video out about Stamkos potentially not fitting in Tampa, which is what I said, um, it was titled, is he overrated? Which I don't think is fair to my argument, but I think you, I, you half made that point. Well, that all I said, was, I said he doesn't fit and they have to, they're going to have to move. Him. And all the Tampa fans were like, I don't know what you're talking about. Not all of them. Read a, well, I'll read the comments. The comments are, are, are very, it's a group of upset people. One day guys, I'd like you guys to stop reading comments. Okay, fine. <laughs> yes. Who's I'm just trying guys? to get it. Who is you guys? You read the comments. Don't even lie. You yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay. No, I, all sometimes you do is read comments. Sometimes no, they're I really do. funny. Sometimes they're hilarious. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that was worth it. Sometimes I play Red Dead and be sad also. <laughs> That's true. I don't just read comments. All right, so Adam, uh, Steven Stamkos, overrated player. They should get rid of him. Steven Stamkos does not fit the Tampa Bay Lightning anymore. Now, it doesn't mean he won't sit on LTIR all next season. Doesn't mean that. Hey. He's probably injured. Listen, Steven Stamkos hey. has incurred enough injuries in his career that you could couture off him in no, no time. Hey. 100%. You can make that argument. Now, are they going to be that obvious about it? That'll be curious because you know at that point, then Gary Bettman goes, uh, we like everybody to be on the same plane here for, for reasons unknown. But he is, I, I feel like if they do that again, they're in big shit. If, if Tampa tries that again, they're in big shit. But could you, if you wanted Stamkos to be better for the playoffs again next year, you want to make another run at this, you can't trade a $9 million Stamkos contract, which is more than likely the case. What if you sat him for half the season? You build up some cap space. If he sits, they do build up cap space, which would open them up to big trades at the trade deadline. Now, there you needs know to that be there... something legitimate. Yeah. Well, uh, And with him, I'm sure you could find something. You could find something. I'd be like, I'd say the doctor, find me something. Yeah. He's going to play 40 games this year. Outside of that, because let's, let's not go with that, because we don't know exactly you know, what, he, what his body is or isn't facing. So he's got the no-move clause, which we've already discussed is ceremonial, right? It's, most it's, cases, yeah. Most cases, yeah. It's just to control where he goes. The other thing that just immediately... Like here, I'll say this. He's got the, he's got an, what is his exact cap hit? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? 8.5 mil. Mm -hmm. Here's the good news. Next year, he makes 7.5 actual money. Mm -hmm. The year after that, 6.5. The year after that, 6.5. Here's where it becomes extremely difficult to trade him. And there aren't many teams who can actually do this. The structure is almost entirely signing bonus. Mm -hmm. It's like the leaf deals. Right. Stamkos is 6.5 signing bonus this upcoming year, then $1 million base, 5.5 signing bonus, $1 million base, and then the same the following year. Is there a situation where Tampa goes, all right, Stammer, thanks for the two cups, $6.5 million check, and they trade him to someone, and they get a hell of a sweetener on account of they just signed a, a check for $6.5 million bucks. What day this year are signing bo bonuses paid out? Because I know typically July it's 1st. July 1st. It is but... July 1st this year, too. Oh, is it? So it would have been paid out. It would have been in the middle of the playoffs. Yeah. They oh, that's pay all that out July 1st. Because it's contractually obligated no matter when the season happens. That's that's when it happens. So okay, it's so already, it's been, already paid. been paid out. And the thing that I'm watching is the uh, roster freeze date, which is this weekend. So come Saturday, once you submit your expansion list, you can't make any trades or move anything on your roster. So I wonder if it comes before, if it comes this week, if they're looking at a Stamkos deal. Something yeah. that happened or that came up last episode, sorry, Steve, to jump in here, is no. that Milan Lucic, when we had that conversation about you know him being protected in the in the expansion draft he won't be because he's agreed to waive his no movement clause there's and no reason one, for him not to right 100 percent. he could still get bought out but he also you know understands and respects where his contract stands in terms of value you wonder if julian brisewall is cold enough because you got to be cold-blooded to leave stamkos unprotected and to make that request 
yes, it's not a fair request, but is it not the smart thing for the, uh, for the uh, Lightning to do? Not because Steven Stamkos doesn't provide value, but again, what we saw in the playoffs was a guy who was a, a power play specialist from the advanced numbers are saying second to third line player. Usually you don't pay $9 million for that unless you're the Leafs. And it's a pretty tough, it's going to be tough next year. They're going to lose some players. I, I'm curious about if you were to put Tyler Johnson or Steven Stamkos out, you know, which one of them is going to get picked up? Does do, do like, for instance, like if, if Seattle had the choice, do they want either of those guys at that number? Yo, if I have Steven, you want so Stamkos. He's got you value. Want him at nine. He's got, ex- it's not nine. Here's the, here's the very interesting thing, because it's nine against the cap which is important. It's definitely relevant, especially with the fact that it's flat. Stamkos in actual money over the next th- uh, next three seasons, since that 6.5 has already been paid, mm-hmm. it's actually 4.66 per year. Because he's Seattle only doesn't owed need to save money. They've got a gazillion dollars. That group has so much money. Everybody needs to save money. Steve, That's... In this case, here, Seattle's number one priority has got to be what Vegas has done. They have well, to win. I'm not saying Seattle in particular. That It should be many more teams other than Seattle. T- Tampa should 100% explore the idea. Every team in the league should be looking at Stamkos and you only owe him $14 million over the next three years for Steven Stamkos. In terms of actual money, he's more than worth that. Oh, well, he's you know only good on the power play and he's pretty ho-hum five on five. That's what the 4.6 is for. That's That's the kind of money that those players make no i seattle i i think we're looking at as you know carte blanche ah uh, stamkos isn't a guy you give away for nothing he just ain't there yet uh and and i know we're in a really difficult space in terms of money we're in a really difficult space in terms of cap space but i think there should be teams lining up with creative offers for this player because wouldn't that make sense it's uh, i mean you're trying to build a team for the 2015 final so you you might as well uh, you got keith you get stammer put him on the same team hey isn't this funny i someone should be the team should be lining up for stamkos has a ton of value you can get caleb jones for duncan keith sorry jesse and with the seven forwards, three D one goalie, Tampa doesn't have that much trouble uh, protecting their core if they wanted them all to stick around in terms of the expansion draft. Because if you run down their forwards, you'd be happy if it's, I wouldn't say you're happy, but you'd be okay if they took one of the the longer contracts, like if they took Kalorn at four point four till twenty thirteen. Like you probably leave him exposed, and that and the seven forwards you cover are probably Kucherov, Stamkos, Point, Gord. Johnson, Sorelli, and then one of whoever you want down on the list is you could, if it's like Matthew Joseph or something, a name like that. You could well, nab Cernak. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be a good get. It'd be a good get. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I'm very, very curious, but uh Steven Stamko's name even being out there is interesting. Now, what about this? What if, gentlemen, after a Stanley Cup run for the ages, GM Mark Bergevin calls it quits after next season? What? Eric Engels. This is a quote from Eric's article. I have one more year on my contract and I will honor that, said Canadian's general manager Mark Bergevin on Friday. What he didn't say will also end, will also fuel endless speculation. Now, Frege then goes on to say in his 33 thoughts, I do wonder if Bergevin and Molson discuss a new front office structure where Bergevin moves up to president of hockey ops, maybe. And either Scott Melendy or Martin Lapointe becomes the GM and therefore the face of all the criticism. Uh, the, the, what we're hearing is that Bergevin's feeling a little burnt out. What I'm hearing is a Stanley Cup finals appearance is an awfully good way to negotiate with a extension coming up. Uh, I think Adam, you're, this is what you're good at, man. This is the time for Mark Bergevin to get a promotion. Yeah, like gotcha. move up, become president. Like that seems like a seems like a better fit for him too. Just I don't know him personally, but like the way he moves in terms of his his um his day to day job, it seems he's more of an overseer of the big business and the bigger picture. And then you have the guy under you uh, do the day to day stuff and all the transactions, and then you get to be the big man in charge. And you you get still get a ring. Your, you get to walk your biceps around everywhere. That's right. 
<laughs> the most what, jacked president in hockey. Yeah. Um, what if it makes sense? If you're Mark Bergevin, you have the conversation with Jeff Molson. Jeff, listen. What if I make more money and do less stuff? Yeah. Got to the finals, didn't I? Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Where do I sign? And I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, if Bergevin is burnt out from being Canadians GM, who can blame him? Ten years in Montreal with that media scrutiny. Plus all the, the, the grinding contracts he had to sign. Uh, I, I mean, I don't blame him. I don't blame him one bit. This is going to be the pinnacle of Mark Bergevin as a GM of the Canadians. It will not get better than this. Man. The chances of the Canadians going to the Cup next year, come on, Habs fans, you know what I'm talking about, are slim. They're slim. We, They're uh, slim. we talked about what our next bunch of trade trees are going to be. Today we had an hour-long phone call. And boy, Mark Bergevin does not do anything small. <laughs> He really no, doesn't. He doesn't. No, uh, the patch ready deal, the Subban deal. The, he's had some monster. He traded Placanets to the Leafs, which I know doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's it's it's. I imagine it was poorly received. He got a second uh, round pick for it, though. He sure did, and and just so much, so much. Um, man, he really does nothing small. He's uh, he's lived a thousand lives as the GM of the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I mean, there's been so many times where he's been on the knife's edge, you thought, of being fired. And, Six and years the, ago. the entire time we've, been, we've had this show, we're like, okay, when's it going to happen? It's never happened. Nope. And, and so, yeah, you can't blame him for being burnt out. This is the time. If you're a negotiator, which he is, if you're a general manager, you have to be a negotiator. If you're a negotiator, you negotiate when your value is at the highest. It is at the highest right now. Jeff Molson, for his part, Cannot lose Mark Bergevin right now. Imagine the fallout in Montreal. You lose with the GM after going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Ooh. Who cares what, what they were in the regular season? Who cares that if the divisions were aligned properly, they wouldn't have made it? You're in the Stanley Cup Final. It doesn't matter. Stanley Cup Final, GM. He will always be able to put that on his resume. He didn't win yet, but that's okay. And so if you're Mark, man, get your, get your however many millions per year and be the figurehead of the franchise. And you have probably four years under your next GM. And then maybe you can make a change and you probably have three or four under the next one after that. Pretty sweet. 